Hi all, welcome to Gallon IAS. In this video, we are going to learn how to write a polity answer or how to structure a polity answer. And we'll be doing this based on a previous year question. Okay, so in this, we will learn how to write a answer. That is, how to understand the demand of the question. And based on that, how do we structure a polity answer for means? Okay, and the question for today is, though though the federal principle is dominant in our constitution and that principle is one of its basic feature but it is equally true that the federalism under the indian constitution lands in favor of a strong center a feature that militates against the concept of strong federalism discuss this question you have to write for about 250 words okay so for a 250 words question you can uh, the mark is 50 marks okay and the UPSC provides you with three pages to write a 15 mark question. I repeat once again. UPSC provides you three pages to write a 15 mark question, which you have to address in 250 words. Okay. And now we will understand the demand of the question. What the UPSC demand from us from this question. Okay. Let's analyze that. Though the federal principle relates to Indian federalism. The federal principle is dominant in our constitution. So this question is regarding the concept of Indian federalism. See, we know that India is a federal country. That is clear demarcation of power between the center as well as state government. This question is based on that concept. Okay. Even though India is a federal country, which is a basic feature, but it is equally true that the federalism under Indian constitution lands in favor of a strong center. Question says that India is a federal country, okay, fine. But there are many provisions of the constitution which shows that we have a strong center. So that we have to analyze in this question. Fine. So in our structure part, there must be an introduction and a body part and a conclusion. So in the body part, what all are the things we have to address? We have to address the federal features of our constitution. Why? Because question says that India is a federal country. That principle is also one of the basic feature. So we must address, you must address the federal features of Indian constitution in the body part. Again, the question is not end. What are the second part of the question demands? But it is true that we uh, favor for a strong sender. So we must write those provisions which have biasness towards a strong sender. Or we have to write the unitary features of Indian constitution. And then in the body part, we must address why we go for having a strong center. See, there must be some reasons. Even though India is a federal country, there are provisions which gives more powers to the center. So there must be some reasons also. And in the body part, after writing your federal features, then we will write unitary features, then we will be writing why we go for having a strong center, and then we end up with a conclusion. So this is the structural part of this question. So once we address all these parts, we will get more marks. Fine. And now let's answer this question. Okay. In intro part, we will write the definition of federalism. Definition of federalism. Okay. So what is federalism? The clear demarcation of power structure between the center as well as regional governments. That's enough for us in intro part. See, introduction part does not fetch you more marks. So give a small intro. Just define what is federalism. That's enough. Okay. See, need not write here introduction, not necessary. But you begin with the definition of federalism. Fine. And now we are going to enter into the body part. So try to give subheadings to your body parts. So first we are addressing the federal features. federal features of Indian constitution and again please not try to write in bullet points okay so try to write your answers in bullet points fine so what all are the federal features of our Indian constitution again one more thing when you use points please don't write in these spaces okay this space is not for us in this space Question number will be printed by the UPSC itself, 
we are not supposed to write in this space as well as in this space also that space is for the evaluator so please take care if you write in this space or that space there is chances for getting negative mark also so try to avoid this please try to avoid that and please write try to write the answer in the space provided for you okay so we give points so what are the features of federal features of Indian constitution one is dual polity and underline this point dual polity so try to write the important features at the beginning itself and underline it okay so it can be highlighted fine so what is dual polity the presence of two governments that is central government as well as state government to ensure the regional autonomy of states enough that's the first point okay then second point what we have a written constitution written constitution underline that so what's the important written constitution the power demarcation is clearly mentioned in this constitution and both center as well as state government has to act according to the provisions of this constitution they cannot exceed their powers so state has its own powers center has its own powers and they can do that it cannot go beyond and that limitation is mentioned in this written constitution itself so that's also a federal feature fine again third point rigidity of the constitution so what is the rigidity the toughness to amend the constitution again when we write a point try to justify your answer by using how always address this part of your points how why we write here rigidity of the constitution how please mention example some provisions of the constitution can be amended with the consent of states only see many provisions can be amended by the parliament alone either by using simple majority or by using special majority but there are some provisions which alters the federal character of the constitution needs the ratification of at least half of the state legislatures so there states are also having some power in amending the constitution it also shows the federal character so when you write a point try to give examples or try to mention the provisions of the constitution so that your answer will be clear fine and fourth point you can say that independence of judiciary independence of judiciary again mentioned how see we learned that both the center as well as state has to act according to the provisions of this written constitution if any of the government violates that who interferes the judiciary interferes the so to maintain its independence and to work for more efficiency we need to give independence to the institution called judiciary so it also supports the federal features of our constitution fine again fifth point we can say bicameralism underline this point what is bicameralism presence of two house that is Lok Sabha as well as Raj Sabha in the parliament so what is Raj Sabha it represents states Raj Sabha is also called council of states so here the representatives of states are in the parliament to make laws why we know that if a bill has to become an act both houses has to pass it both Lok Sabha as well as Raj Sabha has to pass the bill so it shows the presence of Raj Sabha shows the powers of state states so by Kamalism we mentioned we have addressed the part how what's the role of Raj Sabha we address that part also so this forms the structural part so this is the manner you have to write an answer that is after writing points you have to justify that using the question how so this forms the federal features of Indian constitution fine and now we move on to the second part of the body part that is unitary feature unitary feature of Indian constitution underline it point number one again please note don't write your point numbers in this part you may get negative marks for that okay so please take care of that so what all are the features uh, of unitary features of Indian constitution 
Again, one more thing. See, when we write dual polity, we say the power is clearly demarcated between center as well as state. Again, give an example. What's an example? Seventh schedule of the Indian Constitution mentions union list, state list, as well as concurrent list. This shows that the power is clearly demarcated in the constitution itself. So this is an example. So try to give examples to your points. Okay. And regarding the unitary features, we know that we have a strong center. Underline that term. How we can say we have a strong center? Example. By example, we are justifying our answer. See, we learned that there is union list, state list as well as concurrent list. See, in union list, there are nearly 98 subjects in which the center and parliament can make laws. But see, in state list, only nearly 58 or 59 subjects are there. This shows that powers are concentrated more with the center in the union list. So we can say that we have a strong center. We have explained it using an example. Fine. Second point. Residuary powers. Residuary powers. Again, it is comes under Article 248. Okay. Article 248 mentions the residuary powers. And in that residuary powers, that is those subjects which are not mentioned under union list or state list or concurrent list, in that the parliament can make laws. Again, center become more, more powerful. Fine. So, examples or mention the constitutional provisions in your polity answer so that your answer will be much more better when comparing to the others answer so we have the probability to get more marks for that fine again we can say that we have a single constitution okay and the both the state as well as center has to act according to this single constitution itself but see in usa they have a separate constitution for each state but in India, only a single constitution. And who has the power to amend the constitution or add provisions to the constitution? The parliament has more powers. State has only limited power. Again, showing a centralizing tendency. Fine. Again, flexibility of the constitution. Underline. What is flexibility? As I said, many of the provisions can be amended by the unilateral action of parliament alone. Only some provisions request the consent of states, but many provisions can be amended by the parliament alone using simple majority as well as special majority. See, when a states are again give examples, okay, example. See, under Article 3, the boundaries of states has to be altered. Again, parliament can unilaterally do it by using a simple majority. Give example, alteration of states. See, the provisions of fundamental rights. Parliament can unilaterally amend the provisions of fundamental rights using special majority. which shows that the states has no power, showing a centralized tendency. Okay, so we explain this term, flexibility of the constitution, using examples. So, this is the manner you have to write an answer. By right, case, add more points. Again, in some cases, parliament has authority over state list also. In some five extraordinary circumstances, Parliament has authority over state list. See, usually state make laws on state list. But under five circumstances, Parliament has the authority to make law over state list. Then, when under Article 249, yeah, Article 249, when the Raya Sabha passes a resolution, okay, then Parliament can make law on state list. Or to implement international treaties, Parliament can make law on state list, even without state's consent. Okay, when national emergency in operation, or when person's rule is in operation, then parliament can make law over state list, not an issue. Okay, similarly when two or more states make a request, then parliament can make law on state list. So there are some circumstances under which the parliament has the power to make law on state list. We have mentioned that point and justify your answer using examples. Fine, again we can say uh, the office of CAG, who appoints CAG? Center, but see, CAG also look into the or auditing of the state's account. Also, a central agent auditing the account of state, showing a centralizing tendency. Again, we can say emergency provisions. 
So during emergency time, the center becomes more powerful, even without an amendment, again showing a centralized tendency. Okay, we can say example, national emergency or person suit, etc. We can say that. So this is the manner you have to write an answer. Writing a point, underlining it, and justify your answer using examples. Okay, so this constitutes the body part. One more thing to address is why big of or a unitary feature? Or we can say why uh, we go for having a strong center. See, now it is proved that even though India is a federal country, we have more biasness towards a strong center. Fine. So we must say how or why. What are the reasons which make us to go for a strong center? Again, right points. Uh, what? For the to ensure the security of the nation or to accommodate all those diverse. See, we are such a diverse country, right? So to accommodate all those diverse features or for the security of our country or for the unity and integrity of the country, we go for a strong center. So we have addressed this part also. And now we end up with a strong and dynamic conclusion. So this, don't write conclusion here, okay? But just mention those concluding points by giving a dynamic and attractive conclusion. See, even though you does not give importance to introduction part, give some importance to conclusion part. Why means after reading this conclusion only, evaluator assigns you mark. Fine. So, if your conclusion is much more attractive and dynamic, there is a chance that you can get at least a half marks more. This half marks can make a huge difference. Why means in GS paper 2, Okay, there are 20 questions. Just imagine, if for all those 20 questions, you get an extra half marks, what will happen? You get 10 marks extra for one GS paper. Same thing can happen for GS1 also. Same thing can happen for GS3 also. Same thing can happen for GS4 also. This makes a huge difference. So even half marks is valid for us. So try to make an attractive conclusion. If possible, quotes the uh, give some quotes of the constitution makers or many national leaders. Say example, once Ambedkar said, our Ambedkar said that our constitution is both unitary as well as federal, according to the requirements of time and circumstances. So you can quote these kinds of quotes from the national leaders as well or give some another attractive dynamic conclusion because make conclusion little more attractive. As I said, after reading this conclusion only, evaluator assigns you mark. So at least if you get a half mark extra, that makes a huge difference when you count the extra half marks of JS1, 2, 3, 4 and everything, including optional also. So even half marks count. Fine. And I hope you are clear with the structuring part. So this is the manner you have to address an answer. First of all, try to understand the question. The more key thing you have to note on is understand the question and then meet the demand of the question in a structured manner, giving an intro, body part, try to write in bullet points, justify your answers using examples. That means address the question, how? Answer, meet the demands of all the parts of the question using examples come with a dynamic conclusion fine and if you feel this uh, video useful please share it to your fellow aspirants okay and also subscribe our channel for more quality videos thank you for watching bye